Hi folks, I'm really missing you. I've done something to my knee and really can't put any weight on it, so I am home and crutches bound until I'm able to meet with the orthopedic and figure out next steps. So it is what it is and we're gonna do the best we can. I'm gonna start by having you take some notes on a sheet of paper. I think having this on a separate sheet of paper will be nice because you can kind of move it around with you as we're working through the rest of the packet. So I'm going to call this things I need to remember and we're going to use all of these things when we go to solve some trig equations over the next few weeks here. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the unit circle. And I'm going to ask you to remember that the unit circle has a radius of 1. which makes this point on the positive x-axis 1, 0, positive y-axis 0, 1, negative x-axis negative 1, 0, and negative y-axis 0, negative 1. I'm going to label this in radians. So this is 0 radians, pi over 2 radians, pi radians, 3 pi over 2 radians is, and as I complete my trip around the circle, 2 pi radians. I'm going to remember that any angle drawn in here, theta, with an x value and a y value, I'm going to remind you that this distance on the positive x-axis is x, the distance up from the x-axis is y, and that for that particular ordered pair on the unit circle, the x value always represents the cosine of theta, the y value represents the sine of theta. All right, so there's the quick rehash on the unit circle. I'm going to remind you so ka toa, sine is the ratio between the opposite side and the adjacent side, cosine is the ratio between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse, Tangent is the ratio between the opposite and adjacent sides. As I already said, in this unit circle, x represents the cosine of our angle, y represents the sine of our angle, y over x represents the tangent of our angle. And if I think about our reciprocal functions, 1 over x would be the secant of our angle, 1 over y, the cosecant, and y over x, the cotangent. So that's all review, but super nice to have it all in one spot and on a separate sheet of paper so that we can pull it with us and use it as we flip through the pages in this packet. All right, other good things you need to remember. You need to remember your special right triangles, your 30, 60, 90, and your 45, 45, 90. That said, I am going to do this in radians because as we go through and solve our equations, we're going to be using radians instead of degrees. So in the 45, 45, 90, both angles measure pi over 4 radians. And the ratio of the sides is 1 to 1 to root 2. And in our 30, 60, 90, we've got pi over 6, pi over 3. Just a reminder to put the smallest angle opposite the smallest side, or the smallest side opposite the smallest angle. So the smallest angle here is pi over 6. So when I go to label these sides, I'm going to label 1 opposite pi over 6, root 3 opposite pi over 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. Just a reminder that pi over 3 is equivalent to 60 degrees, pi over 6 equivalent to 30 degrees, and pi over 4 equivalent to 45 degrees. All right, and in addition to your special right triangles, 
you need to remember your all students take calculus. And what does this talk about? In quadrant one, all trig functions are positive. In quadrant two, sine and its reciprocal cosecant are greater than zero, are positive. In quadrant three, tangent and its reciprocal cotangent are greater than zero. And in quadrant four, cosine and its reciprocal secant are greater than zero. So we've got to know our all students take calculus. We also need to know our identities. So our quotient identities. We've got to know that tangent of theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. And that cos cotangent of theta equals the reciprocal of that or cosine theta over sine theta. We need to remember our Pythagorean identities. Namely that sine squared x or sine squared theta plus cosine squared x equals 1. We've got to remember that 1 plus cotangent squared x equals cosecant squared x. And we've got to remember that tan squared x plus 1 equals secant squared x. And the last thing that we need to know is our reference angles. Remember that reference angles are always drawn between the terminal side of our angle and the x-axis. So again, I'm thinking about those reference angles as being bow tie angles, where theta always represents the angle formed between the x-axis and the terminal side. All right, so there's a quick rehash of everything you need to remember. Now let's go ahead and get to the good stuff and let's start solving some trig equations. All right, so I am on page 11. I've also got my sheet with me, things I need to remember. And we are going to go to town. First thing I need to pay attention to is the domain over which I'm being asked to solve these equations. First things first, I'm being asked to solve in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, where we include 0, but do not include 2 pi. So if I think about writing that in interval notation, I'm going to use the hard bracket at 0 and the parentheses at 2 pi. I am going to teach you to do this by substitution. So notice in our first equation, we've got 4 times the sine of theta plus 3 equals 5. I'm going to say, and I think t is a good variable to use, u is a good variable to use. I'm going to avoid x and y, but I'm going to say let t represent sine theta. So this equation becomes 4t plus 3 equals 5. And now I'm going to go solve it just like I would any other equation. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, giving me 4t equals 2. Divide both sides by 4, giving me t equals a half. Once I get to there, then I'm going to go ahead and substitute my trig function back in for t. So this becomes sine theta equals a half. So my job, my mission, is to go find in the interval from 0 to 2 pi all of the angles whose sine value is 1 half. The first thing I'm going to do is consider my all students take calculus. This has a positive sign value, so I want to look in only in the quadrants where my sign value is positive. 
sine is positive in quadrant 1, where all of the trig functions are positive. Sine is positive in quadrant 2. Sine is not positive in quadrant 3, nor is it positive in quadrant 4. So that tells me that the quadrants where I want to set up my triangles are going to be quadrants 1 and 2. And that's exactly what I'm going to go do next. And in quadrant 1, I'm going to draw a triangle whose reference angle is theta. In quadrant 2, I'm going to do the same thing. Sine, remember, is the comparison or the ratio between the opposite and the hypotenuse. So opposite theta, I'm going to put a 1. I'm going to label the hypotenuse with 2. And then the remaining side in that special right triangle is 3. And I'm going to go do the same thing in quadrant 2. And now the angle that's represented by that triangle, if I think about this, this is my 30, 60, 90 right triangle where the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side. So my angle here is going to be pi over 6. And that is my solution for quadrant 1, pi over 6. I need to now find my second quadrant angle. Or in other words, the angle whose initial side is on the positive x-axis and whose terminal side is the hypotenuse of that um, triangle. Well, if my reference angle is pi over 6, sorry, I just did that with a really fat pen. Let me go back and redo that. This angle here is pi over 6. And I'm thinking about this here as being pi or 6 pi over 6. That means that I'm either going all the way around to 6 pi over 6 and backing up by 1 pi over 6, or in other words, 6 pi over 6 minus pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 6. Or I am approaching 6 pi over 6, but falling short by pi over 6, making that quadrant 2 angle 5 pi over 6. So those are my two, two solutions for the first problem. If you're struggling, if what I'm saying isn't making any sense, you can always ask Mr. Korea because he, of course, knows all of this math. And as we all know, he's a great guy. All right, I'm going to shoot on to number four, and we'll see what this one looks like. In this one, my trig function is cosine. So I'm going to let the variable t represent cosine of theta. So I've got t equals 3t plus 1. I'm going to solve it just like I would any other equation. I'm going to subtract 3t from both sides, making the left side of my equation negative 2t and the right side of my equation 1. Dividing both sides by 2 gives me t equals negative 1 half. Once I solve, I'm going to go replace t with my trig function. So cosine of theta equals minus 1 half. I have to now go decide which trig or uh, which quadrants I should draw my triangles in. And the quadrants where the cosine value is negative, not here in quadrant 1, they're all positive. Quadrant 2, where only sine is positive. Quadrant 3, where only tangent is positive and not in quadrant 4 either. So I want to go set up my triangles in quadrants 2 and 3. Notice I'm making nice big triangles. So here's my angle theta and my angle theta. Cosine is the ratio between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So adjacent side is 1. Each of those hypotenuses is 2. And like number 1, I'm working with the 30, 60, 90 right triangle, so those remaining sides are root 3. I'm going to label this as minus 1 just to give it some direction. And I need to now go figure out which angle theta represents. Well, theta is opposite root 3, which is going to make theta pi over 3. 
So now I need to go find quad, the quadrant 2 angle, whose reference angle is pi over 3. So I'm thinking about this as 3 pi over 3. So I'm either going all the way around to 3 pi over 3 and then reversing or taking out 1 pi over 3, making that angle 2 pi over 3. Or I'm thinking about approaching 3 pi over 3 by but falling short by pi over 3, making that angle 2 pi over 3. If I think about my quadrant 3 angle, oh, let me get a fatter pen here. I'm going pi over 3 units, or pi over 3 radians, past 3 pi over 3. Or I'm going an additional pi over 3 beyond 3 pi over 3. So 3 pi over 3 plus 1 more pi over 3 tells me that the quadrant 4 angle, whose reference angle is pi over 3, is going to be 4 pi over 3. And those are my two answers to that equation. Again, feel welcome to ask Mr. Korea any questions. Feel welcome to email me with any questions. I'm happy to help. All right, now I'm going to shoot down to number two. I'm going to let t represent cosine of theta. So I've got root 2 times t subtract 1 equals 0. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I'm going to divide both sides by root 2. So t equals 1 over root 2. And I'm going to go back in and replace t with cosine of theta. I notice that the sine of this is positive. So I want to shoot to the quadrants where cosine is positive which is going to leave me in quadrants 1 and 4, and that's where I'm going to set up my triangles. I really don't care about 2 and 3. Here's my theta. Remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is 1, hypotenuses of those triangles are root 2, you might recognize that we're working, or you should recognize that we're working in the 45, 45, 90 right triangle, or the isosceles right triangle. So the angle there is going to be pi over 4, and in quadrant 4, also pi over 4. So my first degree angle, pi over 4, or I should say my first quadrant angle, my third quadrant angle, i got to zip all the way around that circle. So I'm going to think about this as being 4 pi over 4. And this is 2 pi, but I don't want to think about this in terms of pi's. I want to think about it in terms of 8 pi, or pi over 4's. So 2 pi is really the same as 8 pi over 4. So I'm rotating all the way around the circle. I'm either approaching 8 pi over 4 and falling short by 1 pi over 4, or I'm going all the way around to 8 pi over 4 and then taking out or reversing pi over 4. My other angle is going to be the 8 pi over 4 minus pi over 4, or 7 pi over 4 radians. I'm moving along pretty quickly in this video. You can always stop me, rewind me, replay me. Um, that's the nice thing, I guess, about having this on video as opposed to having it live. In number five, I'm going to let t be cotangent of theta. So I've got t plus 2 equals 2t plus 3. I'm going to subtract t from both sides. And I'm going to subtract 1, 3 from both sides. So in other words, t is equal to negative 1, but t is really cotangent of theta. 
So cotangent of theta is negative 1. I'm not a big fan of working with the reciprocal functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rework that so I'm writing with tangent of, or working with tan theta by just taking the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of negative 1 over 1 is still just negative 1 over 1. I've got to decide which quadrants to draw my triangles in. So the quadrants where tangent is negative, well, it's not in quadrant 1 or 3 because tangent is positive in those quadrants. I want my triangles to be drawn in quadrants 2 and 4. And again, notice I'm always drawing to the x-axis, always. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And that looks to me like my 45, 45, 90 right triangle or my isosceles right triangle, making that angle, the reference angle, pi over 4. So in quadrant 2, I'm either going all the way around to pi over 4 and then taking out or removing a 1 pi over 4, or I'm approaching pi o 4 pi over 4 and falling short by 1 pi over 4. So my second quadrant angle, whose reference angle is pi over 4, is going to be 3 pi over 4. And then doing the same approach for that quadrant 4 angle. I'm going all the way around, but I'm not quite making it to 2 pi. I don't want to think about that in terms of 2 pi. I want to think about it in terms of 8 pi over 4, because I want the same denominator here as my reference angle. So again, either I'm approaching 8 pi over 4 and falling short by 1 pi over 4, or I'm going all the way around to 8 pi over 4 and then reversing or taking out 1 pi over 4. Two different approaches, they're both correct. Either one of them is going to get you to that third quadrant angle of 7 pi over 4. All right, and at this point, I'm looking at question number three. This question has two different trig functions. So I think we're going to omit that one for today and say enough is enough. With that said, I think I'm also going to have to modify your homework. I am going to... Sorry guys, I'm thinking, no, I don't think there's any need to notify or modify your homework, but if that changes, I will leave a note for Mr. Korea. Again, if you have questions or you feel like there were things you didn't pick up on, you're welcome to rewatch the video. That's a great tool and again, not one that you have if the lesson is live. You can ask Mr. Korea your questions because as we all know, he is wonderful. You are more than welcome to email me with your questions. Um, but there are lots of ways to get help if you need help, even though I'm not available in person to answer your questions. All right, well, take care. Thank you for watching the video. As soon as I have more updates on my knee and when I'm going to be able to return, I will share so that you're not in the dark. All right, take care for now, though. Bye.